I have something that you might find interesting today. Uh, I saw that Amazon was offering its own brand of synthetic motor oil, and it piqued my interest as to, you know, it was, as it was slightly cheaper than its, you know, its other comp uh, competing brands of motor oil. And I wanted to go ahead and give it a try. Um, but, you know, the biggest question there was, how do I know if it's any better or worse than, like, the brand that I was using, which is this Honda synthetic blend motor oil here um, or especially if it, is it any better than full synthetic motor oil that's offered by you know mobile one that's which is usually my oil of choice so in this video i start out with this honda synthetic blend motor oil um, this motor oil was used in the car since it was new it's a 2010 honda civic um, this is the, this was the first motor oil that I ran through the car. This is this I think would be close to what somebody would be doing at home. You know, you just change the oil. So, the, some of the things that I did to try and keep this kind of scientific is I made sure to keep the oil filter the same. I figured in my head that this Honda synthetic oil, synthetic blend oil could have left behind some deposits or whatever and I know that full synthetic motor oil tends to have a lot of cleansing agents in it and I didn't want those to necessarily contaminate the Amazon oil as much so I did run the Amazon oil through two different tests um, one right after the other to try and get the best results the clearest results on this test to try, try and be as slightly scientific as possible now in a Honda Civic there's a little meter on the dash that says percent of oil life. And what I found through this process is that percent of oil life more or less indicates 8,000 miles. That's what I got all three times that I went from 100% to 0% for the oil change. So all three oil changes have right about 8,000 miles on them. Also, I did two virgin oil samples, um, which means that they weren't ran through the engine, they were just straight out of the bottle and sent into Blackstone Labs. So that way, if there's any contaminants in it, possibly from the manufacturing process of the oil or any additives that might have been put in the oil, um, just anything that might be in the oil from the factory. So that leads us here to today. I have five total reports two virgin oil reports and three actual oil change reports. Let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the virgin oil report for the initial oil that I put in, the Honda Synthetic Blend oil. The aluminum zero, chromium zero, you got a lot of zeros on here, but the things that do have numbers in it, um, like boron 158, calcium 1155, Magnesium 614, phosphorus, phosphorus 667, zinc 768. Um, you don't have any fuel in the oil, you don't have any antifreeze in the oil, you don't have any water, insolubles, and TBN. Uh, anyways, it's starting out at 6.3, and that is the Honda Synthetic Blend Motor Oil. Um, with that in mind, let's go ahead and kind of more or less compare those with the motor oil um, after the first oil change after this Honda synthetic blend oil has been in the engine. Okay, one of the nice th one of the major nice things that Blackstone Laboratories provides with each one of these oil analyses is a little bit of a comments or an explanation section at the top and after having this um, in the engine for 8,085 miles this was the engine at the time of the oil change had 155,000 miles on it. Blackstone Laboratories commented with, this Honda brand oil performed well in your engine. Iron and copper are almost identical to universal averages, which shows typical wear levels for an R18 with about 7,100 miles on the oil. So I have 8,000 miles on the oil, which that means my engine is probably, is exceeding at least what in their experience, um, their expectations are. My engine's exceeding those expectations. Uh, aluminum is maybe a little high at 13 parts per million. 
It's from Piston and or Bearing Wear, and that'll be something to watch as wear tends trends build. There's some fuel too, but 1.3% is harmless and probably from idling or city driving. The TBN is okay at 1.8, 1.0 is too low. Going 10,000 miles next oil change would be okay, but a similar run would be best for comparison's sake. Now, as we work our way down the list here, you notice that aluminum in the virgin oil has zero. Aluminum, after it's been ran in the engine, is at 13. Um, iron's gone up, copper's gone up. So I'm kind of glad that I went ahead and you know, sent the virgin oil in, so that way I could see that it wasn't at zero to begin with. So I know that at least all of that that's there was not necessarily added by the engine. Now the rest of these numbers on here, yeah, the calcium, the boron, um, magnesium, zinc, this says that they are anti-wear additives and are detergent dispersant additives. So if you look across the board here, so the Honda motor oil, at least from what it looks like, and from Blackstone Laboratories comments, there was nothing surprising, there was nothing crazy that stood out to them as far as how this engine oil performed. And it didn't seem like my engine was, you know, shedding aluminum inside of the oil. Uh, let's move on to the Amazon oil and see how that turned out. Let's go ahead and look at the virgin Amazon oil here and see more or less um, what it is that we start out with an Amazon oil. Now something that you'll notice here in this report that's kind of surprising, the Honda motor oil aluminum was zero. The Amazon oil, the aluminum starts out at a content of one. One of the things that you'll also notice here is the Molly or Molly Ben, ben I can't even pronounce it, but the Molly in the oil. That is some type of um, a friction reducer. It's uh, an additive to some oils to, and I guess it helps coat surfaces to reduce the friction. Um, the Amazon oil content has 39. The Honda oil content is 14. Um, so I'd say that that's a plus side for the Amazon oil having the higher Molly content. Um, but we'll see how it holds up over the course of wear uh, with the oil. Other than that, everything is more or less kind of on par with the Honda motor oil. Uh, let's see kind of sort of how the, the Amazon motor oil performed here in the car. So something that you'll notice in the Amazon oil change report, um, they even note that the wear, metal, metal wear um, levels, the metal content in the oil, they say right at the top of the report, it's virtually unchanged. You can see across the board, the aluminum's 13, the iron's seven, the copper's even lower at zero. Which is quite interesting to me because I would have figured having the higher moly content in the oil, that the wear on the aluminum, the, the aluminum number would have probably gone down a little bit, would, hopefully would have been lower. Um, but another thing that I find kind of interesting is Obviously, I don't know if you saw it on the first report, the Molly content in the oil increased on the Honda, where at, I mean, it increased substantially, whereas the Molly content in the oil from the Amazon oil didn't really increase substantially. I'm not sure why. Either way, I would have expected lower, a lower aluminum content to the oil, considering the, you know, the higher wear additive. Um, that, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. It's not until we get down to the properties where they highlighted something that could be a little bit of a concern. Uh, it's the fuel in the oil. It's not a big concern, but it's a it's three percent there. It went up from one point three percent. That could be just simply when was this? The second oil change was taken in December from August that could have been idling more to warm up the engine to turn on the defrosters a lot in the morning or whatever it might be to, you know, to cause additional fuel in the oil. But across the board, at least on this initial oil change, there was nothing dramatic. There was nothing just like way out there. 
it performed very similarly to this Honda synthetic blend oil. And this was, again, Amazon full synthetic high mileage oil. Nothing really dramatic here in the report to say, oh wow, this thing performed way better than any of the, than the synthetic blend oil. So I felt it would be fair to run it a second time, the Amazon full synthetic high mileage oil. I figured a second time in the engine to rule out the potential of any maybe, you know, leftover residue or sludge buildup or anything that this might have posed inside of the engine, I ran it another 8,000 miles, a new oil change, new filter for another 8,000 miles with the Amazon oil. And again, the filters that I've used for all three oil changes in this test were a factory Honda branded OEM, the blue Honda branded OEM oil filters. And I ran it a third time and these are the results that I got. Now, as you can see in the report, it's again, 13 across the board on aluminum, iron, it's now eight, it was seven on the last two. All the rest of the numbers have remained very nearly unchanged. Uh, everything looks pretty good. There was two changes. The TBN was a little bit lower than the first two oil changes for both the Honda and the first Amazon synthetic oil. It's down from 1.8 and 1.9 down to 1.3. The, the biggest significance is the fuel percentage, the fuel content in the oil is down. The first oil change with the Honda oil is 1.3, the Amazon oil was 3.0, and then this one was less than half of a percent. So, um, nothing spectacular. Everybody's, I guess, vision or version of how, you know, oils work in their car is gonna be different. Your car is gonna be different. Scientific tests and studies of, you have two, you know, identical engines brand new, fresh from the factory. They could have metallurgy differences that you can't see. Any number of things that could cause an actual like lab test to maybe vary. As far as like burning off the oil and you know, doing stuff like that, I, I don't know. I mean, you know that, yeah, it might show that the oil will withstand certain specific things, but how does it actually perform when you pour it in your engine and drive it for the specified oil change interval. What I found out going from a synthetic blend, Honda synthetic blend oil to an Amazon Basics full synthetic high mileage oil was virtually no difference. And obviously we aren't looking physically inside of the engine, but again, that's, I don't think that especially with a used engine, an old engine, how do you document it? How do you know what was wearing? You know, I mean, even if you, even if there was some a mark or whatever it was that wasn't there, the previous oil change, how do we know that wasn't an impending failure? The numbers here in front of me show that I don't, I'm not seeing any like major deterioration, at least from what they sample for here. Um, I'm seeing the anti-wear properties between the oils and additives be relatively similar levels. I'm not seeing anything crazy or dramatic between the two oils. Now, what does that mean for me? What does that tell me? Because I can't tell you what, what's, what's gonna work best for you. But what this tells me is the Amazon full synthetic high mileage did not do a bad job. It did just as well as something that's been in the car for the first 150,000 miles of its life. And it was cheaper. This Honda synthetic blend is what, I think almost a dollar more a quart than what the Amazon full synthetic motor oil comes out to be. Why spend the extra? You know, I mean, it, it, it did its job. Something though that I am curious about is the comparison that I have going right now where I have this motor oil. Mobile One full synthetic high mileage oil. I've always loved using Mobile One. I did notice a big difference in my motorcycle and noise, especially being a BMW with, you know, oil cooled, air cooled type engine. 
other motor oils tend to thin out and the engine tends to get pretty noisy. The Mobile One full synthetic V-twin oil, it's not as noisy when it gets hot. But that is the oil that I'm going to be, that I have on the car right now. And we're gonna go ahead and run that through and see how it performs. That's a video coming up in the future. So please hit that subscribe button, uh, hit that like button if you found this information useful. And as always, a YouTube channel is no success without its viewers. Thank you all very much for watching.